Hi, Saturday afternoon, uh, I don't know, it's the 14th, I guess, and um, this is a, a video, brief video, uh, in response to an email that I sent out this morning that was actually in response to an email that one of your colleague students sent out uh, to me yesterday, uh, individually. Uh, a good email, a courageous email. I don't know what's happening, I don't understand this. Uh, those are the kinds of emails and questions and stuff that, are, in my view, are asked by and stated by good students. Um, if you don't know where you are, then you should speak to that. And um, that's how we all learn. That's how I learn. So, uh, anyway, I want to take a few minutes. I want to thank that student. Uh, she knows who she is. And um, I want to thank that student for um, that email and prompting me to uh, send the email out I did this morning and then uh, to do this uh, video. But I have to say that um, um, I, before doing the video, I went up to the website and discussion has begun. Yes! And uh, Ms. Balanzuela has uh, posted, uh, Ms. Uh, Sepulveda has posted, and um, Ms. Brodger has uh, posted. So that's what you do. You know, even if, even if you're not sure, even if you're not sure, you know, and you see that wharf in front of you and the water's there, um, you just run off and hold your, run off the end of the wharf, hold onto your nose and jump into the water and swim and make it work. Well, those three are doing exactly that. And, uh, and I have to say, they're doing it quite well. I've responded to two of them. I haven't responded to the third one because that third one, uh, Prodger came in while I was writing a response to the comments that uh, Sepulveda and uh, Valenzuela made. So, but I'll get back into the discussion early part of the week. But um, so I'm almost thinking already that the video is not so in, not so important because the discussion has begun. But um, let me just say that if you look at the discussion uh, that Valenzuela, Suela, and Sepulveda have done, I'm sorry, Miss Sepulveda, if I mispronounce your name. Um, uh, they, even though they don't call it the gold nugget, they have identified issues of context, and I've reinforced uh, what they have said in my responses to their uh, comments. This is the good stuff. This is how we get into it, mix it up, and uh, hopefully learn about what we're trying to do here. Um, I worry a little bit about having used the word uh, gold nugget, uh, especially when we're talking about population health. It's almost like... Uh, we see gold as a way to uh, explain poor health, but um, good context is good health, bad context is bad health. Um, I think the article, uh, the Rose article, for example, I, well, first off, let me say that uh, um, I looked at the profs notes that I have posted, I think the first profs, prof notes that I have posted for the demographic segment. I, in that, those, uh, there's almost three pages of summary of how I looked at Bungarts and Watkins and Marquitas and Coriel and Hummer and Mosley and Chin and Kirk and all of that. I did summaries and um, suggested what those gold, indicated, suggested what the gold nuggets are in each of those articles. So, um, not that I'm saying that I'm a Chidion or that you are, uh, which is a Spanish word for maybe, I don't know whether it's a real word or not, but cheating and all of that. But I give you some clues. If you pick any of those articles, I think you'll find in my prof's notes uh, some indication of what those gold nuggets are. And here again, what we're thinking about, you've got to think about the ZI. We know that there are individual, there is individual variation in health. Um, some people may have a predisposition to cardiovascular disease that others might not. Um, in our equation uh, of Y health outcomes and XI at the individual level and WI at the group level and the ZI at the context level, we know that there are XI uh, influences. That's the medical model, and that's okay. That's what this is all about. Rose makes that argu argument that we need to move away from the medical model and get more into the population-based model so we can look at the prevalence and not the incidence, so we can look at context uh, and not just at the individual level factors that predispose perhaps somebody to an illness, but what are those triggering mechanisms in the context that might uh, make those predispositions uh, manifest, shall we say, or even somebody who's not predisposed make those um, illnesses and diseases manifest in any case from the standpoint of contextual influences. So um, I think you'll find a number of uh, gold nuggets in there. I want to just 
a, an illustration from the Rose article. I think that's the one that uh, Ms. Sepulveda used as her um, articles, I recall. Um, there she's talking about, or Rose is talking about, um, the st systolic blood, blood, blood pressure. Now, um, and he's making a comparison between uh, Kenyan nomads and London civil servants. Now, if you s sit back just for a moment and you imagine the social context of Kenyan nomads and the social context of London civil servants, you can only imagine that they're extraordinarily different. Uh, absolutely <laughs> different. At opposite ends of the continuum. So when we look at what Rose has written in there, and you look at that uh, figure, which I don't remember now which figure it is. Um, uh, let me see, maybe I have it here. Because uh, I did address that, I think, as the lead article in my notes. Um, I guess there were four pages of notes. Um, yes, uh, figure two on page 33. There, he's given the a figure that shows that the systolic pressure uh, of these two populations is virtually identical. It, you know, it's got that curve to it, which is what we would expect. It is a physiological characteristic of humans, and so you would you would imagine that that curve would look the way that it does. The significant difference is is that while they're the same, the nomadic uh, curve is shifted down uh, from the uh, from the London London civil servant and has a lower average. Uh, which means that they have, shall we say, a better blood pressure or not as high a blood pressure than the blood pressure of those in the London civil servants. And in those, uh, my response to her uh, discussion, I said, just imagine what it might be like in a, in a way, uh, perhaps shall we say in an adverse way, if one of those Kenyan no uh, nomads suddenly found him or herself uh, in the context of a London, of London civil service and, um, and all of what that would mean in terms of dynamics and stress and all of that, we might imagine that that would have an adverse consequence for their uh, blood pressure, and it might very well, on average, become more like that of the London civil servant. And the reverse, if we had um, some uh, uh, a, a lady, say, that who's a London civil servant who finds herself by some magical way in the nomadic population in Kenya, we might find over the course of time that her blood pressure might drop. And, uh, and we know from things like uh, encouragement that we get from doing yoga and eating right, uh, taking walks, things that improve our, uh, our physiology and uh, uh, lower our blood pressure. Um, I, we can see what, how the contextual argument is being made by Rose that those two very distinct contexts of nomadic social context and civil service uh, context are producing very different health outcomes. A perfect illustration of what we're trying to do. In that discussion that Rose does in that paper, that is the gold. That's the gold. That's the ZI. The variation in ZI. Remember, ZI, I means is that there's variation in Z. Sometimes the context is good and health is good. Sometimes a context is not so good and health is not so good and all those things that are in between. But here we got a ZI, a Z variation. I represented one of the I's, uh, represented one of the Z's, shall we say, represented by the nomad population, one of the Z's represented by the um, uh, London civil servants. So we've got that variation in Z and we can see the variation in health. Very much to the point. Uh, Valenzuela follows up on uh, with a Bruner article in there and we, I did a video on that yesterday I think in the biological plausibility uh, Bruner uh, that thesis that he puts there is elaborated somewhat with Michael Marmo in the second chapter of our text uh, it is a critical piece of our argument how do we get from social context to poor health or good health um, what is happening in between and the article is the point of it is, is that, as we can think of in terms of rows, in those London civil servants, their stress is high. Um, and so the biological plausibility here is that their stress is so high, it's impairing their coronary arteries in some way. Uh, there is just, a, there is stress going on, and he illustrates what all that is. And, uh, and we can imagine that for the nomads, the biological plausibility here is that the stress is low, and so their uh, systolic blood pressure and 
their coronary heart disease as a consequence is also very dissimilar from that that we would expect of those who are civil servants in London. So the Brunner article is, and, and how he and Marmo elaborate that in that second chapter is significant to our argument of that physiological pathway from context to health outcomes. How does stress uh, impair our autoimmune system? And the comment I was making yesterday and making that PowerPoint about the insidious character of stress, it just continually goes, our adrenaline glands constantly pumping. Not in a, not in a fight or flight way, but just insidiously, just, you know, a drip from the adrenaline pump constantly. Uh, you know, it begins to uh, sap our energy. Uh, just like you can imagine with, with the Frisbee article. The mothers in those areas where the, uh, well, well, again, the ZI varies in the uh, index of concentrated disadvantage in that Frisbee article where the disadvantage is high, interuterine growth retardation is also high. Where disadvantage is low, interuterine growth retardation is low. It's not absolute, but it co-varies. And so we would say that most likely we would find that the mothers in the high areas are stressed. Um, they have, there's an insidious level of uh, adrenaline going on that's uh, eating away at their metabolism and drawing uh, nutrients into their own bodies away from the fetus, uh, from, the, uh, from their unborn children, and uh, producing a, a baby that is uh, low birth weight, but yet full term. Uh, as we were saying yesterday, most preterm babies, or low birth weight babies, are preterm. So these are very good illustrations of the of the gold. And I could go through a number of these. We, I talked about Rose. I talked about Frisbee. Uh, the Bongarts Watkins on the fertility transition, transition, I say, is filled with large gold nuggets. Something of a gold mine. Uh, you can see um, how it varies there. Um, now that I think that you're beginning to see it, and uh, ba uh, Balansueda and uh, Prodker and Zepulida have taken the risk and have jumped into the water, see what they're saying and see what they're saying is right. And look at my responses and get into the discussion. I don't think I really need to take this much, uh, much further than, uh, than what I've said. I just wanted to look you in the eye and say that, uh, you know, we, we can do this. The context is the gold. And... A lot of these articles that we're reading now, although some less than others, or more so than others, uh, some have less statements about context. They just talk about variation in infant mortality or something. But if you look subtly, like the Omen article, you can see that infant mortality is varying by rural to urban. And you say, well, what's going on in the urban environment that creates a greater infant mortality than in the rural area? Uh, you know, so there's lots of things here, a lot of subtle statements that are made in some of these articles that you have to really mine, and then it's right in your face in, in the Rose's article, in Rose's article, in the Frisbee article. That is all about the variation in the ZI, the index of social disadvantage. Where it's high, IUGR is high. Where it's low, IUGR is low. Very definite relationship there that we can see between the context and the health outcome of IUGR. And um, Bruner gives us that logic of the biological plausibility of what's happening to those mothers in those high disadvantaged um, areas. They're stressed! Um, it's insidiously eroding their metabolism and drawing energy away from the development of their babies. So, anyway, uh, hang in there. Uh, when we get to segment two and on, it's all about context. It is about goal. We're going to get more into contextual influences. This was just a a place in the demographic segment for you to kind of look at how we measure, how we use demography, uh, of birth and death measures for looking at the status of um, population health and um, in these articles. And then while doing that, looking at how the why varies, the, the mortality issues vary and the, um, the birth issues vary, moving upstream, shall we say, so what do those authors say about the context that maybe the ZI that may be varying that's producing the variation in those birth outcomes like IUGR and or health outcomes like uh, systolic blood pressure in the Rose article. So um, hang in there. 
and uh, I'm going to conclude this because I'm very pleased that the discussion has begun. Get in the discussion. Give me a chance to respond to you and encourage you because you're going to do it well. I know that you are. And uh, I have 5 o'clock here, San Antonio time, and I am going to say, as they would say, I'm going to sign off. And uh, I hope you have a... Um, I'm going to send this by email, and I'll log it on to the, uh, our regular document and put it up on... Um, Blackboard uh, on Monday, but I'm going to send this uh, video to you, link to YouTube uh, by email here in a few minutes. Have a good Saturday evening and a Sunday, and talk to you next week.